Right. Hello, and this is... Hello everyone watching, this is Z Doctor, and I'm together here with Typical Manga Fan, where we discussed the latest chapter of Bleach. This is Bleach Chapter 606, Divine Division. And we're opening with pretty much the scenes that have been happening right before the last chapter ended. I kind of actually like this little speech right here with the guy, though. The one where he's like, even though I told you not to call my name, you just do it. I told you that I send you away to repent, you come back. You, I didn't keep growing up and you just keep causing trouble like a little kid. Oh, you're just too much... You're just going to leave me no choice but I have to kill you now. <laughs> you know, it's kind of interesting because in, in Bleach, names are literally everything. Like, everything. Uh, well, like with the Zanpakuto and all that, yeah. yeah. And like, knowing the name of an attack makes it like, what, 30% strong? That's oh, true, like, like Getsuke. Uh, yeah, it was like it's like it, you. Um, it's only a third as powerful if you don't know the name of it, right? Mm. And and of course the Zanpakuto's name and everything. And I'm just like, well, I don't know. The, uh, to me, the name doesn't really mean much because it's just a name. But I guess in Kubo's eyes, it's it's like everything. Well, it's, it's, there it's, are it's, scenarios like magic systems that's where knowing a na thing's name does give you power over it. So there is sense to that. Like, yeah, I, I don't well, know if you're familiar that, with like the, do, you know the book series, the Dresden Files. No, not at all. Okay, well, it's like one of the things they have in there, like, if you know something's true name, and in this case, true name is defined as a person's name exactly the way they say it. Like, if you can mimic that, say it exactly like they do, you have complete control over that person. Actually, you just reminded me of something. Ever seen the, the Studio Ghibli movie, uh, Tales from Mercy? It's a really bad one. Uh, uh, I remember seeing ads for it, I never actually watched it. Okay, well, basically, you, in that movie, uh, it's never explained about anything because that movie was a bad movie. Mm -hmm. But in the, uh, it was based off a book, and in the way it does talk about true names, and in both in the books and in the, in the movie, if you know someone's true name, you basically have control over them. Right. Like, like you, yeah. But it's kind of a weird type of idea because first off, that movie didn't explain it mm -hmm. uh, really at well at all. In fact, but um, you know, I, I just, I just think that I feel like you know, like I think. Uh, Zangetsu talked about it more. He's like, yeah, knowing the name of something d just d doesn't mean you have total control over it. And and I remember him talking about that. I, spe I think it was um during after his during his fight with Zoraki, he said you gotta know more than just a name. You got you gotta understand the Zanpakuto. And I think that's why I took I took that hard because that was also when you know Bleach was very good and and all of its ideologies ideologies made sense. Mm -hmm. So when he said, look, you, you know that my name's Zangetsu, but you never know how to, you don't you never try to understand me. You never try to use me in a way that you know. Yeah. Would work and best for me. And that work, doesn't that go kind of go hand in hand with learning Bankai too? Yeah, Bankai was the same thing. Yeah, exactly. And um, so that's why when I see this whole name stuff, I'm like, come on! I thought we were already over that. I thought I thought we moved on from just just name part. I thought now we can go into the you know other understanding part. But Kubo has been a little inconsistent with that, so I don't know. Maybe, it's not really big, it's, it's not a big deal though. Maybe this one particular guy just sensitive about it. Yeah, well, that is his job, so. Yeah. Anyway, so he's talking to Yobok, and Yobok in his Nazi uniform is like just standing there being, you know, punk, Nazis. Basically, Nazi. They're, they're Nazis. I don't care. Like they're obviously based off of Nazis. I mean, there's no, there's no uh, w being wishy washy about it. It's pretty obvious at this point. Yeah, I mean, like I said, even if you don't count the, like I said, even if you don't, even if you leave out the German-based names, you're gonna see a plenty of things on there, like the ideology and all that, for example. Actually, isn't the, isn't the isn't the, isn't it the Quincy Cross kind of similar in a way? Like, is, is do you think it's kind of like a reference mm. to the Nazi thing? I mean, it, it doesn't have the swastika, but it's kind of like you kind of like think about it for a second. Like, oh no no no! Actually, wait, that that med that medallion when they try to steal people's bonkais, remember? Didn't it make uh, a swastika sign? I don't I think remember. it did, right? The only swastika I can really think of in the series is Ichigo's, and that's more yeah, of well, the Buddhist swastika. Yeah, but I think I remember the, in the medallion. I think the medallion it either made a cross. Or made a swastika. I forgot which one. So if anyone's listening, just go check that out. I want to be, I want to be sure on that. Um, so yeah, we go into this next page, and then we show him basically having no eyes, uh, no, uh, no peoples. Yeah. And he's being, it's, it's like he's possessed and all that. It's obvious. Okay. Obviously, this guy's supposed to be the Buddha, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um. And again, a, a massive waste of a page because honestly, I think I can get the same type of vibe from a, a panel that's half the size of this one. Mm -hmm. I mean, it. Okay, what's like all, all, all that black in the background? I mean, all, it's, and all that, that entire beard is just like you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it feels like I could get more content if I just shorten these panels just a little bit, you know? Yeah. And 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 then Geo Box staring back because like he does that in every single chapter. Why does why does this one get a big panel? You know? <laughs> you know I don't know. 
it's just a an exit. After that, though, we kind of do cut away here. And here's one thing I do have a small issue with myself. Like, in the next scene, like, where we got Urahara meeting with, like, the former Vizard. Is it Vizard or Vizard? It's Vizard. Okay, I like Viz I went with Vizard, because that's, I guess, what I found out first. Like, that's kind of... Vizard does fit, I guess, because it goes with the mask, but I kind of like Vizard more. But anyway, so if, if I use that, that, you at least know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing here is, um, there's also one other character we we meet here in this part of the story. Yeah, okay, yeah, I was, okay, I gotta tell you, I was confused, like, who is this Nesama? I'm like, and when I found out, I was so, I was, I was exclaiming my, like, I was out, I was saying it out loud, like, holy crap, and I, I'll, I'll tell you who it is. It's, uh, it's Yorichi's sister, I mean. Right. Now, I, I, don't, I, have was, an, I don't have an issue with her having a sister in the first place, but why introduce her now? Exactly, that was my point, exactly my point. I was like, <laughs> wait, she has a sister? I mean, this is the final arc of the story. We have known this from moment issue one of this arc. And now we have suddenly have a new character that has a close relationship to Yoruichi, a major character. One of them's going to die. <laughs> and, y yeah, I, 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 I'm so confused about... Like, I'm just like, why, yeah, why now? Like, okay, yeah, she's, a, she's the new head. It's kind of interesting that she's not the captain of the, se of the second division, because mm -hmm. historically, it's always been the head of the, the Shihon clan. Shihone, whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. What's it called? Shihon or something? Maybe, maybe she's too young still. She doesn't even look like she's much of a fighter, although that, you know, appearances can be deceiving. Yeah. But it seems like she's not, I think, maybe, um, maybe course, it's because they... Here's another question. Is this a girl or a boy? Yeah, I think it's a girl. I don't know, because um, Yushiro, I mean, wouldn't that be, a, well, I, that could be a male name. Screw that! It's a girl. I don't care. All right. Until something says otherwise, we'll go with that. We had a guy. We had gaz gazelle be weird. Okay. No, let's just yeah. leave it at that. Okay. So as I was saying, um, I was thinking that maybe it's because they spent so much time when Yorichi was the head. Maybe they spent so much time grooming her, they kind of put her sister sister to the side yeah. because she wasn't gonna be important. And then Yorichi up and left, and you know, no one could have expected that. Yeah. So like, she's like kind of like an opposite of Hinata and Hanabi. Yeah, pretty much. And then they're like, so they're like, oh, okay, so I guess you have to be the head. Well, we didn't really help you at all and prepare you, so I guess, you know, we can't really have you be the captain. Fuck it. Yeah. You, do, you just sit there and look pretty. <laughs> it's not prob probably. We, what the thing is, we don't know anything. Yeah. We don't know anything about her, except she's... Exactly. Her personality is really, like... I mean, there is no reason to introduce her unless there's some specific thing that we require for her, that house's backstory involved here. But like... You know, it's kind of interesting that, that Lisa looks so freaking different now. Hmm. She looks like she her hair is just she looks like a ten times younger. Who? Lisa Yaramaru. Oh, the one that wore, the one that wore the uniform. Yeah, the glasses girl. Okay. I was mostly paying attention to Hiyori here, mostly because I actually was a little slow to remember this, but like I'm watching her talk with Urahara and it made me realize, oh yeah, that's right, she used to be his lieutenant. Oh yeah, I, I keep. Yeah, wow. That's how much we forget about stuff because we get everything gets dragged out that we forget about anything that happens in the story. You know, yeah. we really I mean, only focus on like a single battle or two. You know, really. And then Lisa was also like, like, um, Kill Raku's lieutenant once upon a time. If yeah, I remember they, it right, these guys are basically the visors who didn't have any uh, positions opening up for them. Yeah, or or maybe just didn't want to come back in the first place. Well, I think it's more because the positions didn't open up for them. Because if you think about it, all the other ones came back because there was a position opening up. Hmm. Yeah, true. I mean, yeah. Because, uh, the only one that was we don't really talk about is the Keto Core, but who, mm -hmm. no one know again. No one knows anything about the Keto Core except for that Hachi and uh, other guy, the Tessio, Tessio, whatever his name is. Mm -hmm. uh, Tessio, I, I don't know. Um, I, I know it's also the T, but uh, they that they were members of the Keto Core. But we don't know anything about them now. I mean, it's it's like there's so much unexplored stuff about the Serite that we I don't think we'll ever find out yep. because Kubo doesn't care, I guess, or he forgot yeah. about it because there's so many characters, right? I said, that's the weakness. That's kind of a weakness to a gigantic cast. I mean, a big cast is one thing, but like, and and or you can do it like with One Piece. Like, yes, there's a gigantic cast, but it's herded up together pretty well. Like each section of the cast has its own little section of story that they folk stick around in. Yeah, and so basically now it's it's clear that they have something with them, and they're preparing something for for uh, with Urahara, mm -hmm. and then they let Ichigo and Yorichi basically go up with uh you know go up ahead of them. So it's it's obvious that they're following they're going to follow them, um probably to the Soul Palace, mm -hmm. um, but and it seems like like Urahara there's something more to him. Obviously, obviously we had we knew there was something that was really suspicious about him, especially since the Eisen arc, in which he was like, mm -hmm. you work for that thing, so obviously, or at least, 
in, in some way, in, in, in really very uh, blatant ways you could notice it, uh, Urahara is working for the Soul King or someone in the, of that caliber. Or he and is. <laughs> Ura no, 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 no. That'd be... No, 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 no. That, Uruhar being the Soul King is a big, bad block twist. That, that, it would be even worse than, than the Yami thing. Not give it to me. It's not going to happen here. It, it, I'm, I, <laughs> I, I refuse to believe that would ever happen. Uruhar being the Soul King. That would make well, no sense. Because cause there's a history behind him, too. And then he's been he's been there forever. And then there was the Soul King. We did get a cameo of the Soul King, by the way. So, hmm. um, And Uruhar was off in the like, Mundo. Remember that. So there's also a, a bit of a plot... A plot hole there, right there. Okay. You know, some some uh, inconsistency, but um. Yeah, I'm just saying, like I said, it's weird. My thought that came into my mind, so I don't know. It's not impossible, but I don't know. You're right. It's probably not too likely, but still. Uh, he could be like maybe the, another member of the Royal Guard. Um, yeah. Who knows? Like, like their field op. Like we gotta say that he, it's been a hard, he's been, he was exiled for hundred years. He could have been doing a lot of those hundred years. Hmm. Um, and yeah, if you, you think about it, why is that Urahara? Like he couldn't come back. Like I don't know, like it's it, it's you think that they would let him come back to the Soul Society for 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 uh, extended periods of time, and maybe they did, and he just didn't want to. But I don't I don't know. I feel like I can't. It, it feels weird that he's kind of just off doing living in in the human world at this point, even though he's pre, he's technically allowed back. Maybe it's because he has connections with the, the kids. Who knows? Yeah, but maybe he just likes uh, it better. Ah, who knows? But uh, yeah, Urha has been interesting. Like. There's a lot of things that we don't know about him, uh, and it seems. And, and honestly, a lot of people thought he was going to be the villain, like the final villain um, during the Eisen. The, when the end, when the Eisen arc was ending, he was giving right. off a very villain vibe, and he was saying weird stuff. I, I don't have the chapter pulled up, so I can't say exactly. Yeah. But he was saying suspicious things, and he was he knew a little too much, and, he, and even then he was kind of like. Yeah. And I, I guess Kubo tried to. He does. I think Kubo did this really well, actually. He kind of brushed it off by kind of by, both with time, and with Uruh. Demean, uh demeanor, like he combined it in the sense that we so we so we kind of stopped caring about what Uruha was, I and mean, I guess we assumed that he was just like that, and like oh, you know, your mom's a Quincy, blah blah blah, and he, he kind of knew he kind he knew more than obviously he let on, but I think right. we we, we kind of underestimated how much he actually knew, other than the fact that he probably works with the Soul King, but but the reason why I put that up now is because it seems to me that Uruha doesn't really care about Ichigo as much as we think he does, because mm -hmm. remember he she, she says like you think they're expendable. Um, as long as they can slow down the enemy, like he's yeah. he's treating them, he's treating both Ichigo and Yorichi, you know, and especially Yorichi, as yeah. as kind of like because they're at uh, least they're at best lovers from as far as I can tell. There, yeah, well, we'll we'll, 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 we'll leave that to the fans. Yeah, um, but, or at least childhood friends, which is in anime either the exact same thing or the exact opposite. Well, you have to say that in Bleach, that romance is not focused on. That, that's what Kubo yeah. says, and that that so far that's the one thing he actually has kept his word to. Romance <laughs> is not focused. But the thing about the thing about this is that he's treating them like chess pieces, and that's <laughs> that's scary. Like that's because Uruhara is the guy who you trust. Like they all trust. So, actually, it, I just had a little random thought. You're not going to follow this because you don't follow a series, but. It's almost like Urahar is like the doctor, like Doctor Who, because that's some of the traits that he's known to have. Like he's he'll he 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 is in some versions known to be manipulative, but he's always doing it for like the greater good usually, even though it might mean like manipulating his companions for it. Yeah, yeah. I guess. I mean, like there's a couple of versions of it that of versions that are especially that, but anyway, that's just I don't know, just random dot that occurred to me there. So yeah, anyway, we uh we, we get oh, a yeah, sorry, here's now I know why it thought to me like. It may be that he does care about them, but it's just that for the sake of the greater good, he will discard them if he has to. Okay, well, yeah, basically, yeah, the greater good guy. But that, I, you know, I don't, I don't know how hard it is to follow those types of heroes. Mm. Um, anyway, so we uh, we going to, we basically get the picture, uh, uh, pa the panels of uh, Yorichi's sister. She's crying. Uh, she's kind of like, you know, why <laughs> couldn't I have introduced a hundred chapters ago? Then we could have shared a scene. That you you could actually caption that in the first picture a uh, panel of her like she's just lifting that weird thing up and she's like ex exclaiming you know oh sister's already up uh, already gone ahead and you could you could probably caption that in it'd be perfect someone do that <laughs> um, why the hell didn't you introduce me hundred chapters ago aren't I supposed <laughs> to be important um, not if you're a red shirt yeah so I don't know um, so we see her just being strange yeah. and childish. Well, Which yeah. You know. Yeah, see, I mean, she looks like a kid, so it probably is. Like I said I, with her introduction, I fully expect to see either her Yoruichi or 
possibly soy fondue. Soy fondue is unlikely, but... Soy fondue has almost died like three times already. If she's not dead yet, she won't be dead at all. Hmm. True enough. I mean, like I said, it's like... But she's the closest one to Yoruichi besides Urahara. And Urahara is like... I don't, I don't see him dying except for maybe like in the very climactic moment. Anyway, so... Oh, wait, wait, wait. You know what I realized something? Hmm. She's holding something, right? Do you think that that is the, uh, the, the thing that took down the... the, the, the um, this, what's, that, what's that bird thing called? The Sokyo something? The Sokyo? Sokyo? Uh, the gate that they had tried to kill Rukio with? Yeah, that gigantic bird. Oh. Yeah, mm. whatever. It sounds an S. So, I, I, I want to say Sokyoku, but it sounds like Hogyoku, and that's definitely not the case. Yeah, Hogyoku uh, is the is the no, Aizen sphere. I, I, yeah, I know. It's, it's, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm blanking out on the, uh, on the, on the, on the, whatever it's called, but it, remember, but remember the, um, oh, it is called the Sokyoku. Huh, who knew? Okay. Alright, go. Go you and your memory. Right. But yeah, I know what you're talking about, though. Like the, Execu- the shield, Rukia's yeah. execution platform almost. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's remember the shield that that prevented that um that basically stopped the Sokyaku from uh from attacking Rukia and Ble- Ishigo uh was from the Shihonikan. Huh. So hey, oh. that could be a possibility there then. I mean, if that's of course makes you wonder why why didn't they wait for that? Because that sounds like something that could be useful. Yeah. So and obviously it's it's sh- the I'm, I hope I'm saying this Shihone Shihon. Shion, that's a Shion, yeah. Shion, the, Sh- the Shion clan, the Sh- obviously they needed her for something, and I'm assuming that it's something that only the Shion clan has, uh, or house, whatever. Um, so that could be it. So, yeah. Um, and they're crying, and then... It, they, they're saying it was it was for the greater good, for the sake of Serite, which kind of shows you that Uruhara does kind of see them as expendable, as long as it's for the greater good. Which kind of shows you that he's a lot darker and a lot uh, more... Mm-hmm deceitful than you expect and it's kind of you know and we kind of all knew that but we i guess we never really saw how far how 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 far how far he was going willing to go to to, you know, to protect serite um and of course you, again i'm looking at these panels and these gigantic ass panels that cover half of the page and are no, just not even so much the background most of them either like there's like yeah. a little bit of rain when she's holding up her thing yeah i mean like right now i'm looking at the chapter with a uh, with ichibe and his name is Ichibe, right? Yeah. Ichibe and Yuha Bok just fighting. And it's just... Okay, great. They're, they're fighting. It's, you know, you know. Mean, I'm glad. At least they're fighting in the sense of... They're, they're not doing one like one overpowering OP attack and then yeah. have the other guy be surprised for like a couple yeah. of seconds. But like, it's, page f- like you're on manga screen, like page 14 is like... One third Yuha, one half Ichibe, then the last third is like... Um, just to them talking. Yeah, see, see, you know what? I can't. I don't want to say Kubo is not trying because I know I don't. Being a mangaka is very hard work, and you work like almost nonstop, and you don't really get enough sleep. Yeah. But I'm. But I. But what I can do is compare him to the other authors. I'm not, and I'm not. Gonna, I'm not going to compare him to One Piece, okay? Because I know a lot of people get tired of that. Yeah. I'll compare him to just Naruto. Even Naruto has way more content, more, more art, more everything, like, more drawings. More per page, yeah. More per page, more everything per page, you know, more fighting, more everything. Uh, and I can't, I cannot, like, it's just, it's just like a lot, there's so many authors out there, mangakas, who, you know, are producing more and more content per page than Kubo, and I, honestly, I think at this point, Kubo's just banking on his former, on his former glory. Or just phoning it in while he ends the series out. Well, yeah, but you see, I don't know. I don't know why the editor would be worried about losing people for this. I guess they don't care because I guess people are still either people are still liking the brand Bleach, and mm-hmm. you, you all know those people. You know, yeah. oh, Bleach is good no matter what it does. <laughs> and then there are people who kind of like sticking to it with it because it's the last arc, um, and it's like you know what, no matter how you know, they'll I'll just stick with it even though it's going to be forever until it actually does end, <laughs> which is a very very intelligent business ploy. You know, call it the end, and then everyone will come back for it. Even though it's technically longer than maybe three or four arcs in another manga. Yeah. So, yeah. So obviously Ichibe has a lot of vicious killing intent. Yeah. And he's changed. And you know, it's kind of interesting that Ichibe is like, you know, because they were talking about how the original Gote Thirteen was very violent. Yeah. And that that was what made them powerful. Um, it, I'm assuming that Ichibe was one of them. And I think if, if you if you can probably find like a silhouette of someone who maybe looks like him. May, um, you can't. We can't really confirm that though. But I, I'm assuming that he's, he's at least he was one of the original thirteen. I'm, I can, I can see that. I mean, it would make sense, right? It would yeah. definitely make sense. Like what, you know, like at, at what point would uh, you know 
how it would a, a captain become basically the leader of the Royal Guards. So, and I'm, maybe this is a guy who kind of kept his vicious, you know, personality. And maybe that's why he's so powerful enough to fight off Yuobok. Because remember, Yuobok killed Yamamoto in one strike. One strike. Right. But he also had, like, used, like, a body double at some point, didn't he? Yeah, but then, then, then he came back, and then Yamamoto was prepared to use Bankai again. And he stole his bankai. He's like, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. You, you're not going to do that again. And he just killed, cut him in half. And I was like, wait, wait, wait. So he didn't. So Yamamoto didn't flash step out of the way. He didn't try to block with some type of keto or bad or bad or whatever. Um, what's the other one called? Bad B it starts with B. Um, it's the binding one. Uh, don't know. Uh, yeah. So. Um, yeah, I forgot what's called, but yeah, keto and um, that other. Technique that binds people. Bakudo. There we go. Bakudo. Oh yeah, Bakudo number whatever. Yeah, Bakudo. He didn't use a Bakudo. It's like okay, well, uh, did why you know is you a box super super fast that he, Yamamoto couldn't see it, and he's so powerful that he literally chopped Yamamoto in half. And so seeing this, seeing the Ichibe just being able to hold you a box off for like more than five seconds kind of shows you maybe Yamamoto really wasn't the strongest anymore, and maybe he was just being an, an arrogant when he said that. Mm. Actually, I was kind of going back and checking. I, I'm looking at TV tropes right now, like the character page for Ichibe. Yeah. And actually, um, I think it kind of explains a couple things that we were having some trouble with last week and maybe here as well. Um, like it points out that, and also it's going to be coming up here as he explains his powers in a bit. Well, actually, I did read about that in Manga Street. Manga Street actually did re- talk about that. Yeah. Um, but basically, I, one thing we, I don't know if you remember it or not, because I, I didn't, but basically, like, he's the one who gave everything in Soul Society its name. Like he's the one I do. Who, I, I remember that. Yeah. Okay. So actually, it makes, his powers make a lot more sense now that I realize that fact. Actually, now now I think about it, that w- I remember thinking about this before, but I kind of forgot about it. But yeah, him being able to name everything basically ma- means that he has to be have he has to have been been there since the very beginning. Yeah. And it also mentions here, like on our in-series nickname, like most people call him Oso rather than his real name because saying his name actually causes you to lose your voice. That's what happened to Yuok earlier. That and that's why I warned him not to use his actual name. Oh yeah. So wait, why didn't that happen? Why wasn't that permanent with Yuobok again? He 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 gave himself his voice back. He he undid it. Oh yeah yeah okay yeah because Yuobok's overpowered yeah. I remember. Yeah. Okay. Well at least that, that's one thing that kind of cleared up a little bit I guess. Yeah. Well I mean. So yeah, he talks about and then they fight a little more, and then he's kind of and Ichibe seems to be you know he has this ability to like split things in half in terms of power. Yeah, um, like he, he'll affect the something's name, and as a result, he'll affect the name or the thing. Yeah, which is kind of like the uh, reverse of what he did with uh, with uh, Renji. Hmm. He he gave it the full name, so he gave it the full power. Right. Versus now, he gives it like a really he gives he basically cuts the power in half, which is actually a very interesting. I mean, again, it it goes back to the whole naming thing, right. but at least at least his power has been established in a way where it makes sense that he could do this. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I don't I, have a problem I, with that. That that makes sense. I'm, yeah. I'm okay with that. It's it's an odd it's an odd power, but it's one that does work specifically with him. So, no complaints on that. And of course, we go to I, I'm I'm on a page uh, where they have another big ass panel of your Bach basically getting split in two. Yeah. Or or and, and again, well, it's just a waste of a panel. So I don't much. know. I'm I'm gonna disagree with you on that one because something like that is at least worth a decent sized panel. A, a, a four a quarter a quarter's fine. Yeah. It's just a half. No, it's even more than half. It's like three quarters. Yeah. Three fourths of it. That that's the problem. It's, it's it's even when it's supposed to be big, it's bigger than it should be. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Um, and he's and and, and, the, and okay, another problem I have is like we all know it's not gonna work. It's not working. It's not gonna work in the end. I think that's another issue. Right. Like, true. I think, big, I think yeah, those it does kind of take away from the shock value, doesn't it? Exactly. That's the problem, and that's one. That's actually the reason why I'm not. I don't give a shit about this panel. Is that we all know it's not gonna work. If he actually was cut in half and he was actually bleeding on the ground and like on the brink of death, and that was actually you know true and not some type of illusion, then that is definitely worth uh, even a full praise spread. But guess what? It's not. It's just a part of a. It's, I mean, it's just a small part of a fight that was yeah. obviously meant for stupid shock value that we all are not falling for because we read yeah. Bleach for I mean, a it, long time. If it at least seemed to hurt him, that'd be a whole other thing as well. But we don't get that either. Well, he's been hurt before. Remember that. Yeah. So it's not. Th- that's actually not that surprising. Um. And remember, he 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 was already hurt in the beginning of the fight. So. Um. Yeah. So he pushes him back. Blah blah. blah. Uh. And we have this. Really weird panel of his face, and it's kind of a—he's he, obviously a psycho at this yeah. point. 
and he says it's kind of this is a really weird thing to say. Um, and ma the manga stream, uh, translation says, "By your most hated leader of the Shinigami." So that's weird. Is he? Is he? He, he was obviously. I mean, you can probably infer that he's the leader of the World of Guard. Yeah. But he is the most hated leader of the Shinigami. It, what does that imply? Something more like was he the actually? Is he the true leader of of like? Is he? Well, I don't. I don't see like because I always think Yamamoto is the strongest, right? And he's also oh. the leader. But well, he, he says, but he says by your most hated leader. So maybe it's a personal history with him and Yuak. Oh, okay. Okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So of the, oh yeah, because it's at that he's probably thinking about there's more than one leader. So he hated Ichibei the most. Why is that? And that's a great. That's a question to ask. Which means we'll probably get a flashback here at some point. Uh, it'll be weird to see. Uh, yeah. Um. Basically, the Yuabok we saw as Ichigo Zanpakuto, yeah. because that's that's what he looked like a thousand years ago. Yeah. You know what I want to see? I want to see Yuabok. I want to see Zan get to Yuab I mean, I want to see the uh, the manifestation of Ichigo's Quincy powers actually come out and look and like let's just look at Yuabok and Yuabok. I wonder what Yuabok's reaction would be. Like, is yeah. that myself? Because hmm. wouldn't that be? Because you know what? I I've noticed that a lot. I think the Quincys don't actually realize that he's a, that Ichigo's half Quincy. Cause I, I think only, well, only, only I think only you Bach and like B know that. I mean, um, yeah, B know that because everyone else is like shocked that he. They, they don't even know what he looked like. Actually, yeah, remember that? They didn't even know what he looked like. Yeah, they just know that Uok is like a big thing about him because that's when yeah. they were when the when uh, the girls were when the girls were fighting him. Yeah, and um, and of course it's obvious it's it's been known that Uok doesn't tell them everything. So my guess is that only basically you know Uok Ichigo each uh not Ichigo um B uh, Hashwald basically. Um, and Iryu, they're the only ones who actually know that Ichigo is part of Quincy. Because, I, in, in my opinion, if, if, if the other Quincy knew that Ichigo was part of Quincy, they'd be a lot more scared. Because if they were so pretentious and they're so arrogant with their own powers, they're like, okay, here's a guy who not only has Shinigami powers, but has Quincy powers. So you should be scared of him, basically. And hollow powers. And hollow powers, too. That, yeah, but he's not using them. Um, although, I mean, arguably, because his hollow powers are combined with his Shinigami powers, but that's that's weird. I don't, I don't That's weird. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it kind of falls into this full brink. Cause wasn't the full brink supposed to be like hollow based? Yeah, you know what? I, that's, yeah, that 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 let's yeah, let's let's pretend the full brink never existed. Because okay. honestly, it, it really sh it really shouldn't have. And but, it never, all, I mean, nothing really came of it anyway. The full the problem is all the full bringers never were in the same situation as Ichigo. So while the explanation for them works, the problem is the full brink with Ichigo kind of gets weird. Because not only was his he was a full brink, but the hollow attacking him wasn't even a normal hollow. So. He like his his Shinigami like his um not his Shinigami, his um his Zanpakuto basically took the form of the Hollow so it's it's so it's so weird I mean it it, it it it's obviously because Kubo retcons himself a lot and he was like oh maybe this is a better idea so he changes himself but when you look at it when you look at it it's just barely pulling ho pulling holding the logic together it's just mm -hmm. like you kind of have to suspend your disbelief and just like, yeah. just you know forget about it. I mean, Ichigo's to to always been an exception to the role in any case, but yeah, but that's that's a bad thing. That's 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 terrible because he's the main mm. character. Yeah, we all know that. Yeah, I think the main character is to get a little bit of exception because he has to, there has to be something that makes him special that makes is him Ichigo worthy of being the main character. Is, is Ichigo supposed to be some type of Jesus type of character because he's like one of everything? Mm, possibly. And like, you a box supposed to be like the false Jesus, and then you you Ichigo's like, oh no, I'm actually Jesus, and hmm. I don't know. It's it's just so. You box like yeah, I'm not actually suffer. I'm, I'm I'm actually you know, okay and uh, and he's he's smiling and of course you know things are gonna go down and maybe you box might use uh, he can't use Volstandig because he has the Bankai from Yamamoto yeah and so he'll probably use Yamamoto's Bankai and burn Ichibei to a stake I don't know hmm. slant yeah. <laughs> I, I don't see. I, all, all the all the, the problem with the Ichibei fight is that all it is doing is it's just delaying Ichigo. That's all right. it's doing. And the problem is we that was the biggest middle finger to me in my opinion. We we have Ichigo. We waited for like a like what a hundred uh, fifty uh, fifty uh, pa um, chapters for Ichigo to arrive. He comes in. He doesn't want to kill anyone because they're girls. Yeah, great for you. Um, and then of course he gets he then Ichigo box like nope I'm going back I'm going to go back up and he's Ichigo's like oh I'm gonna go back up too. So we and now we don't see him again. So it's just like it's just a big f you to everyone who waited, you know. Yeah, no, it's like, I mean they might they may as well have kept Ichigo there unless there's some special reason he had to go back. And the, the only thing well, he got from going back was Orihime and Chad, and that's not really anything. Well, if, you, if the problem is if Ichigo, if Ichigo was there, then he'd be helping Ichibei fight, and that would that would that would actually 
quicken the fight because Ichigo being the main character and just getting a power up kind of by shonen rules means he can't lose for at least for a while. Um, yeah. Which is he's why they wanted to avoid got to win his ne- Which means he's either got to win his fi- next fight or at least come at- so that he's a threat to the bad guy. And he and Kubo, I think Kubo, that was the point of having Kubo come down. I mean, Ichigo come down in the first place, just sh- just show him off a bit, but not full, not, sh- not show off his like full on powers, because who yeah. the hell knows what Ichigo's capable of at this moment. I really want to see Hollow Ichigo because Hollow Ichigo didn't mess with the whole. She's a girl. I'm not gonna hurt her, even though she's killed millions, uh, hundreds of people, thousands of people actually. Yeah, Byakuya uh, just got trashed. Yeah, I don't know. I I hate the whole. You know, I hate the whole like. Oh, she's a girl. Don't hurt her, type of thing. It's like, no, 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 no. We're all yeah. about equality, right? So if you kill the guy, you kill the girl too. Yeah. Chivalry is fine, but when they start trying to physically kill you, that goes out the window. I, I think chivalry is just a reverse sexism. Well, it's it's, it's sexism in a way because you you kind of mm-hmm. demean the girl, like mm-hmm. you think she's not a threat, and now it's just like oh, she is a threat. We know she's a threat, but you're not going to kill her because she's a girl. Why? Like, th- this is this kind of like, it's 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 just it's just stupid. It's like. It's a double standard, basically. That's what it is. Anyway, so that ends Bleach with the chapter. Um, this, and I don't know. I it's just fighting. I guess there's a lot. There's a little more pay, um, content than last time. I guess. Yeah. So I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, I, I maybe I don't know. The, the, they're fighting for a bit. We do find out more about um, I guess Yoichi's family. I'm assuming they have something from the Shion clan, which is probably that shield thing that might it might seal him. Um, you know what I think. I think Ichibe uh, was the one who sealed Yuabok. And he did it with the Shihon thing. Cloud shield. That's possible. That, that's actually... I mean, that would explain, that would explain one, why the Shihoin are involved in the first place. And that would explain why he... Yeah, and that would explain why he hates Ichibe so damn much. Right? Yep. Ichibe might... Because you think about it. Remember, Yamamoto did not kill him. He said he couldn't kill Yuabok. So, and Yuabok was sealed. How the hell did he beat Yuabok in the first place? He was sealed, right? But by who? Or by whom, whatever. Yeah, and we have then we have this guy, and then the, are any of the other royal guards specifically good at seals? Do you know? Did they say one way or the other? Uh, no. Okay. No, the other the one was good at the uh, speed and assassin and, and medical. Yeah. Was good, one was good at medical skills. The other one was good at clothing, and I guess uh, she was the it, she was like really intelligent. She's like inventor or something. Um, but then there's another inventor who was uh. Hikifune, who's a cook, basically, uh, who was, I guess, his best when it comes to healing people and, you know, all that. And she also was a great, mm-hmm. again, as I said before, a great inventor. Uh, no, just uh, each of is the only one who can think of. Because then there's the Zanpakuto guy, and, you know, that's about it. So, yeah, I, I say Ichibe. And remember, Ichibe is powerful, right? So, yep. he he definitely would have been, at least, he, I mean, it'd be boring just to have Ichibe be, oh, a random captain who just happened to be really good, and so he was happened to be chosen as a royal guard who just happened to be the strongest ever. I mean, yeah. all these royal guards are very, they've been special in some yeah. way. And in this case, like, giving him the personal connection to Yuak would definitely make a bet contribution to the fight here. I mean, it would make it, I mean, it's personal, and it also means that when Ichibe does eventually de- be defeated, it's going to be, like, a big thing for him, for Yuak. Yeah, um... I, I think that's I think that's basically it's what Kubo was trying to hint at us like oh there's obviously a deeper connection between them and I'm going to assume that's because Ichibe was the one who sealed Uyobok or maybe he was the one who actually delivered the killing quote unquote killing blow yep um, but yeah with us there's not there's a lot to speculate really but um, at this point we, you know anything can be thrown at us uh, so yeah I guess we'll just leave it at that yep and Ichigo cannot come any sooner I mean seriously just uh, well, you know he won't come at least until after each of he's been defeated, and or is about to be killed, or right after he's been killed. <sighs> you know, I, I just kind of want each of to come to finish everything. I bet you once he comes, I bet I bet someone someone's gonna like build like ten thousand walls, and each goes got to come across those walls and yeah. break apart break apart the you know the doors all that. Um, and it's gonna make, spend another fifty chapters him of him doing that while we're off, who knows where, finishing off probably the. Some other fight that we don't really know about. I don't know. I mean, it looks like most of the action on ground levels at least died down now. There might be some last-second things with like the the lady that survived, but otherwise, I think we're focusing up on on upper levels now. Oh yeah, because yeah, some of the girls survived, yeah, right. Yep. It's because the girls. Is that is that why? Is that is that because what? Is that the why they survived? No, they uh, they they would have been killed anyway because of you uh, you walk. No, you, I'm, I'm I'm referring to just Kubo deciding to let uh, them play them. Sorry. Okay. Uh, well, given the alternatives that who could have survived, I guess they were still the better choices, but still. 
Well, we saw some guys who we never found. Like, I want to see Basby die. Like, I, I I was getting annoyed by Basby. Like, everyone, he was just he was just beating everyone to a pulp. And I'm like, okay, this is a guy who supposedly was able to combat Yamamoto's flames. You gotta be kidding me, right? And who's like, I, I just Basby was so overpowered. I kind of want to see somebody beat him up. And of course, he, no. So it kind of Kubo kind of took away that. Your yeah. block, he, he took away that from me, which kind of annoyed me. Because I want, of all people, of all the Quincy's, I want to see Basby get beaten, get killed by someone. Uh, oh well. Whatever. It it quit, it quickens the end the end of the arc. I mean, the last arc of the manga. So whatever. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Alright, so I think that's about. Anyway, I think that we're pretty much. I think we're at the end of Bleacher. Like I said, we're like each base loading, and then Yuok is like, "Do I look like I'm suffering to you?" And then that's the end of the chapter, right there. Pretty much. Yeah. All right, so they said bleach is chugging along on there, so we've got that kind of done here for the moment. So, so we going to move on to One Piece now. Yeah. So with that, we're that's the end of our bleach review for tonight. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna move on to One Piece here in just our next video in just a bit. Hopefully, you'll enjoy that too. You guys have a good rest of your night, and thanks for watching. Bye.